Have you ever struggled bowling in swing or out swing? Are you just not able to control your swing as well as you'd like? Or simply, do you just not understand how swing bowling works? Well, this full swing bowling guide is perfect for you. Firstly, what is swing bowling and how does a ball swing? Swing occurs when one side of the ball cuts through the air faster than the other side of the ball, allowing the ball to dip into the side that is moving slower through the air. To make it really simple, when the ball is swinging conventionally, the air will pass over the smooth side faster than the air will pass over the rougher side, allowing the ball to dip into the rougher side and swing that way. Then there is the slightly more complex reverse swing. Basically, reverse swing is the opposite of conventional swing. The name even says it. This time, the ball will swing to the shiny side. This happens normally at the end of an innings or later on in the life cycle of the cricket ball, when both sides are extremely rough and you're still trying to shine the one side. The air will pass over both sides, but they will be extremely turbulent over the rougher side, causing it to bounce away quicker, dipping the ball into the shinier side. After knowing how swing bowling happens, we can dip into the two types of swing bowling, namely in swing, where the ball swings from the off side of the batter to the leg side, into them, and out swing, where the ball swings from the leg side of the batter to the off side, or away from them. Every single bowler will have a preference for one of those two swing methods, with the other one being a little bit more difficult to execute. This will be heavily dependent on your action and your natural wrist position. Oi! Over 60% of you are unsubscribed. You know what to do. Get it done! Next up, let's look at some tips and techniques that will help you bowl the two types of swing and deliveries. There are three basic methods that will help you swing the ball more efficiently. The first method is using the seam position of the ball. This is where we use the angle of the seam to help promote the swing towards that area. For instance, if as a right-handed bowler, I want to swing the ball in, I'm going to angle the seam towards leg stump. From here, we're going to have the shiny side on the outside. With the shiny side on the outside, the ball is now going to dip towards the seam as well. But we're already forcing the ball into that angle, so that the shiny side has more time to work towards that, and the rough side's got more time to work through the ball. The converse is also true. If we want to go for the waist swing, yet again, I'm a right-hander, we're going to have the ball angling towards the slips. From here, we're going to have the shiny side on the inside to allow the ball to drift through the air and then land on the pitch. What this could also help with as it lands is have the seam point in that direction to even, to even further promote. That's such a difficult sentence. To even further promote the ball going in that direction with a little bit of seam movement at the same time. The second method is using your wrist to help induce the swing. This is where at the top of your action your wrist starts angling towards the batter. So for an in-swinger, your wrist is going to drop onto the inside to really promote the hand pushing the ball towards the basin. It is a little bit more forced, but can sometimes generate more swing. But the little bit of the downside to this is that sometimes you lose a little bit of the control because the ball swings that much more and makes it that much more difficult for you to land it exactly where you want. For the waist swinger, what you want to do is really force the wrist behind the ball into a more cocked position and really try and force it slightly on the inside of the ball as you bowling it. Important is that your fingers still need to stay behind the ball because if they roll off it, you're going to be bowling an off cutter and that will be counterintuitive to what you're trying to do. The third method is using your fingers to help with the swing. That's where you use your index finger or your middle finger to stay longer on the ball. For an in-swinger as a right-hander, I'm going to look to try and keep my index finger on the ball as long as possible. This is going to help push the ball out into that angled position where it is going to swing into the batter. Again, making sure that the shiny side is on the outside of the ball. If I want to do the away swinger, what I'm going to try and focus on is keeping my middle finger on the ball for as long as possible. And that's going to help the ball come out in that position there with the seam already presented towards the slips. And then with the shiny side on the inside, it's going to help that ball swing away. At the same time, this is a bit more hidden than some of the other ones, but it does give you the same effect at the end of the day. So what happens if you're simply swinging the ball too much or find yourself bowling a lot of wides? Well, here are some tips to help you control swing. Tip number one is where we're going to look to angle the seam even more in our hand. This is to make sure that the air catches less of the rough side and is going to negate some of the swing. At the same time with this, it could cause you to roll your wrist. So the pros and cons are there. Just make sure you keep your wrist nice and behind the ball with the shiny side facing towards where you're going and it will stop the swing. Or stop it swinging as much to give you that little bit more control. The second tip we're going to look at is changing the location to where we aim. For instance, if I'm bowling in swing and the ball keeps going down leg, it's important that I start the ball slightly further outside off to allow it to swing into the stumps. To do this, you are going to straighten your run up at the top of the mark to change your running angle. Because as you know, 
false bowling is all about the lines and if our running line changes it's also going to change the point where the ball goes the same can be said for the way swinger where we can go slightly wider on the crease to give it a little bit more angle in towards the basin and swing later this could also help with the way swinger to swing a bit less because you're taking more angle onto the ball and that's going to take away some of the swing but it's important to know that we don't want to change it in the crease we're going to change it from the run-up because on the day in a match you don't want to be thinking about your action you just want to bowl the ball and hit your areas tip number three is where we can look at elongating or shortening the front arm to help with the swing the longer the arm goes in general the later the ball is going to swing the shorter the front arm the earlier it swings but there have been occasions where this is very player dependent and the comfort of the player. So try both and see what works for you to allow the ball to come out while still hitting a good area and completing your bowling action. Want to switch up your game by improving? How's about you purchase one of our training schedules that will be linked in the description below. Here is a three drill sequence that will help you master this most effectively. First up, we're going to start with wrist flicks. We're going to flick it from the bottom, making sure it goes up initially with both fingers on the ball to make sure that we've got nice control of where the seam is going. From there, what we're gonna do is try and keep the index finger on the ball longer, and then also the middle finger on the ball longer. This is important because make sure that you can see the ball coming out of your hand and train your wrist to stay nice and behind it. Because the backward revs on the ball is what's gonna help promote swing through the air to get more air going through the rough side of the ball. With this, the slight progression in this is you're going to do overarm flicks as well to make sure that the wrist is good at being in that position as well. You can do this with a friend or you can do it into the net. Yet again, you want to do it with the index finger on the ball long and the middle finger on the ball. Progressing forward, we are now going to go into stationary bowling position where we're going to stand and bowl, focusing on the fingers on the ball for long periods, trying to keep that seam presentation as upright as possible or slightly to each side to help promote that swing. This is important because focusing just on the fingers here is going to make sure that the ball comes out of the hand in a nice pure way that the ball is going to promote swing through the air. At the same time, you can see the results as you are doing it. Once you're comfortable with this, we're going to move on to the final part of this. We're going to add a couple of steps into the run-up and then still try and do it. What we've done is called chaining, where we've taken small segments of the draw and cut it down to make sure that we can link it up later to get the best out of it. With a slow jog in, we're now focusing on the momentum through the crease at the same time, while still trying to keep the aspects of draw number one and draw number two at the forefront to make sure that we've got good control even when we are running in. This is important because when we bowl into a batter, we need to know where we land in the ball. So do this progression as many times as possible till you feel comfortable. A massive thank you to all our members that make these videos possible. We do really appreciate it. If you would like to see how to improve your front leg brace or how to bowl at the death, check these videos over here. So obviously your swing bowling works with the shiny side and the rough side. The air is going to pass each side of it. It's going to cause the ball to dip either way, swing in or out, and yours actually drift not really swing bowling. So I'll show you